Hey, did you hear? We rounded up the last stragglers from House Climate. Yeah, and brought destruction raining down on one of their villages in the process. Of course, it was partially their fault for mustering an army, but... I can't believe His Majesty would allow such meaningless slaughter. Something on your mind? If you object to their idle gossip, it would behoove you to speak up. No, it's just... I don't really know what Dimitri was thinking either. It's almost like he's built a wall around himself, ever since the day he killed his uncle. My apologies, but could I ask you to join Gustav in keeping an eye on things here for the next few days? Sure, you going somewhere? Kinda surprised Dudu and Rodrigue aren't joining you. The two of them recently departed for Dusker. They have their own duties to attend to. Then why don't I join you? I've got more free time these days than I know what to do with. Offering to work during your well-deserved time off is not as praiseworthy as you believe it to be. <laughs> You're one to talk. I suppose you have a point. <sighs> Very well. I'll take you up on your offer. The journey will not be a pleasant one, but your assistance will surely prove valuable. I was wondering where we were going. This is the village that was wiped out during our recent battle. Hold on. You're not planning to bury the dead by yourself, are you? It's not really a job for a king. Perhaps not. Yet a resting place is all I am capable of offering them now. Were it possible, I would not have let this village lose a single brave soul. I never intended to see them incinerated by the all-consuming flames of this war. But as the one who authorized our battle strategy, I alone am culpable for their deaths. It's not like you made the decision lightly, though. You discussed it for hours with Rodrigue and the others. Even so, no means can possibly excuse these ends. No amount of justification will bring back the lives that were lost here. True. And no matter how hard you fight for a better outcome, there's no guarantee you'll actually achieve it. No. I cannot shut my eyes to the cruelty my actions have wrought. Yet, if I do not claim this battle, and its aftermath, to be just and proper, my soldiers will lose faith in me. How long must this horrible cycle continue? Don't be like that, Dimitri. I'm sure people will understand if you just tell them the whole story. There's no need for that. This burden is mine to bear, and mine alone. Hey, Dudu. What are you doing here? You need something? No, but I must ask, what are you doing here? Just, you know, making sure all the equipment's in good shape. With how rough yesterday's battle was, I figured it couldn't hurt to round up all the weapons that got broken and try my hand at fixing them. I see. Sorry, should I not have taken them out at night or something? You're giving me this look like you don't trust me. You have His Majesty's trust. I will not lay a hand on you. But I would like to better understand who you are. Makes sense to me. I'm still just a newcomer and my background's unclear at best. My apologies. Nah, it's fine. I'd be suspicious of me too if I were you. Besides, I don't exactly want to go losing my employer either, so feel free to keep as many eyes out as you think necessary. Dimitri clearly needs all the help he can get. I mean, he made me a commanding officer without so much as a second thought to my past or my intentions. Yet that conviction makes people follow him. And I agree with his decision. Having you close by is convenient. What, so you can keep a better eye on me? 
Uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as he's paying me, I'll do whatever I've got to do to win for him. Oh, and if I do anything suspicious, you're more than welcome to cut me down right then and there. A very mercenary response. Well, yeah, that's what I am. I might have risen the ranks, and I might have my own unit now, but I'm still a merc at heart. As long as I get the results, everything else, like trust and respect, will follow. At least, that's what my old Captain Burling taught me. So, I guess I don't have much choice but to just keep at it till I earn your trust. I see. Now, these weapon repairs will take time. Allow me to aid you. You sure you don't mean keep an eye on me? Glad to have your help, though, to do. You know, Felix, I've been thinking... Actually, never mind. What? You can't say that and then not tell me. Come on, out with it. Uh, okay, it's just... Even though you never show it, I can tell you really care about Dimitri and the others. <coughs> you alright there, Felix? There's no reason to get all choked up over it. <sighs> it's your fault for saying something so ridiculous. Hey, you're the one who asked. But it's true, isn't it? I know I'm right. And what proof do you have? Well, for one, you move way better when you're fighting alongside them. <laughs> That's only because I've known them so long now I can predict their every move. The boar always rushes straight into enemy lines, so I have to be ready to cover him. Of course, few can survive one of his mad dashes. But I can't just leave him alone. The man doesn't give his own safety a second thought. We don't coordinate, though. I just stick around to make sure the coast is clear for him to run wild. Huh. But when you're fighting with Ingrid, you're usually the one who ends up charging forward. Yes, because her Pegasus is an easy target for enemy archers. It's better for me to dash ahead first and eliminate any potential threats. Not that she's incapable of dodging an arrow or two. But she loses sight of her surroundings in the heat of battle. If she advanced before I did, a cloud of arrows would be the end of her. Uh-huh. So then, why do you always get surrounded when you're fighting with Sylvain? Because the braggart always insists on showing off. Though, if nothing else, he does have the skill to fight his way out of any bind. It sounds like that's not part of your strategy, then. But you'd still never pull it off if you didn't trust each other. <laughs> it's all natural for a soldier. You know, I'm kinda jealous. Is that how things are when you've known someone your whole life? <laughs> Don't ask me. You could reach the same conclusions about their combat tendencies in just a few battles. If you've already got a good read on me, the others shouldn't be an issue. Anyway, we're done here. Talking to you is exhausting. Oh, it's you. What are you doing? Uh, hey, Ash. Not much, just perusing this tactics book. Have you read it before? I sure have. It was popular in Leicester a few years back, if I remember right. I picked it up myself back at the monastery, but it was so dense it took me ages to finish. It's a pretty tough one, I'll give you that. But there's some great stuff in here too, if you can get past the writing. Hold on. You were born in a remote mountain village in Ordelia territory, right? Uh, yeah. What's your point? I guess I'm just impressed you can handle such an obtuse book, given your upbringing. I mean, nobles and the children of rich families are taught to read by default, but most commoners never get the opportunity. Honestly, I've been wondering who taught you ever since our time at the Academy. I hope I didn't offend you. I'm just curious. 
Nah, it's fine. I learned from my mom. Adoptive mom, that is. Looking back on it now, it is kind of weird that someone as smart as her was off living in the middle of nowhere like that. Hmm. Well, I'm sure she must have had a reason for being there. Hard to say. She never liked talking about her past, so I don't know much beyond what I saw for myself. At the very least, it's obvious she was well-educated. That's clear just from looking at you. Not only can you read and write, but you know arithmetic and how to navigate with a map, too. In that sense, you're not so different from the average noble or knight raised in the lap of luxury. You really think? Yeesh, you're gonna make a guy blush. I only have my mom to thank for raising me so well, though. Yeah, she must have been an incredible woman. You know, I didn't know how to read myself until I met Lenato. Huh, and now that you mention it, I never really saw the other mercs in my company with a book in their hands. Except for the captain, of course. Makes me wonder where my mom learned all that. But it's not like I can ask her now. She's gone. Oh. Hey, just the guy I wanted to see. I've got a bit of a favor to ask. You know that special sword you fight with? Well, I was wondering if you'd let me take a peek at it. I don't know. It's not really something I want to go showing off to people if I can avoid it. Oh, come on. Can't you make a tiny exception just for me? I'm curious about something. Alright, fine. Can't say I expected this kind of interest coming from you, though. It'd be one thing if it were Dimitri or Felix asking. You know how they get about weapons. But you? You do remember I'm the heir to House Gautier, don't you? I've been studying the art of combat ever since I was just a kid. Well, you always skip out on training, so... Anyway, here. This work? It sure does. What a weird sword. You know what it's made of? It doesn't look like iron or steel to me. I couldn't tell you. Honestly, I have no idea. What about how you can make it appear right out of thin air? Is that some sort of magic? Nah, not exactly. It kinda just comes to me when I call it. Well, that's vague. Uh, one more question then. Would I be able to use your sword if I wanted to? Doubt it. The thing vanishes the second I let go of it. But, hey, why do you want to know so much about it anyway? I guess I was just thinking how nice it'd be if there were more weapons like yours out in the world. You know, a hero's relic can take down hundreds or even thousands of soldiers in a single swing. Depending on who's doing the swinging, of course. But as soon as the wielder dies, that's it. If you don't have a crest, it's nothing more than a fancy-looking hunk of whatever they're made of. Of course, that wouldn't be an issue if everyone could just use a sword like yours. Maybe so, but that doesn't make it possible. I mean, there's still so much even I don't know about it. Right. It's not like you can just make a second one or something. That's actually a pretty interesting idea. You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? Hey, you're talking to the future Margrave Gatze here, remember? Of course I'd think about this kind of stuff. After all, us nobles wouldn't have nearly as much work to do if everyone could fight with the relics. And then I could spend all my time goofing off, just like I did back at the academy. Yeah, in your dreams. Don't make me tell Ingrid about this. Whoa now, you don't need to do that. Have a heart! Come on, let's see that sword of yours a little more. You're a lifesaver, Mercedes. Could you help me tend to this soldier's wounds next? Lady Mercedes, where would you like me to put this? Oh, um, yes, just a moment, please.
You really have your hands full, Mercedes. Anything I can pitch in on? Oh, goodness. I appreciate your offer, but I couldn't possibly ask you to take time out of your day to assist me in these tasks. Hey, don't be like that. Anyone who's still got the legs to stand on after a battle needs to do whatever they can to help. I'm no physician, but I can at least help get some of this stuff organized. But you only just returned from combat yourself. Aren't you exhausted? Hey, I could turn that question right back on you. You were there fighting with us that whole time. I suppose that's true. But are you sure you don't mind lending a hand? Sure as anything. Just tell me what to do and I'll be on it before you can even blink. In that case, there's a box over at the training grounds. Would you mind getting it? There should be bandages and medicine inside, so you'll be able to tell which one it is just by opening the lid. Got it. Be right back. Hmm? Oh my! Wait just a minute! What's up? Give me your right hand. Okay. I knew it. You're injured. Here, I can patch this up in a jiffy with my healing magic. Whoa, it's all better. Thanks, Mercedes. You need to speak up from now on if you're hurt, alright? Don't be so nonchalant about your health. Hey, I could say the same thing about... <laughs> Actually, never mind. Anyway, it should be easier to carry that box now. Thanks again, Mercedes. <laughs> no, thank you for offering to help. Oh, and take all the time you need. There's no rush. <sighs> Another beautiful day. Perfect weather to get a bit of training in. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Hey, Annette. Not used to seeing anyone else up and about this early. What's up? Oh, this is awful. Just the worst. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? It absolutely does. You sang my song in front of the other mercenaries. Your song? Oh, you mean the one about the horse that had a human face? No! I mean, yes, but that's not what it's about at all. Really? I could have sworn the lyrics said something about the guy's body being 80% horse. I liked it so much I couldn't stop humming it to myself, and then I had to teach it to the other mercs when they overheard me. Which explains why I heard it in all corners of the camp. It really caught me off guard. I haven't sung it for anyone else yet. Only you. Sorry. Should I have kept it to myself? I thought it was a great little tune, honest. I'm glad you liked it that much, but I hadn't even finished writing the lyrics yet. I don't mind my songs getting around once I'm happy with how they turned out. But it's super embarrassing when people hear one before I've finished writing it. Okay, yeah, that's fair. It's no fun when people see or hear something when you're not ready to show it off. I mean, I'm the same way. I can't stand it when other people watch me practice my sword work. Though, I can't really avoid it if I want to get any real training in. Exactly. But my song's out in the wild now, and there's no putting that cat back in the box. I guess I'll just have to wait till everyone forgets it. Hey, uh, I'm really sorry about all this. I could tell everyone to pretend like they never heard it, if you think that would help. No, absolutely not. That'll just make them all suspicious. In that case, why don't you just finish the song? Then you can sing the final version for everyone, and they'll forget about the old one in no time. You might not be happy with it right now, but it's clearly catchy if all those people are loving it. Hmm, huh. you have a point there. I guess I just need to finish up the lyrics then. That's the spirit, though I do really like the whole 80% horse part. 
Huh. So House Yvonne is actually just a branch of House Blathed? Yes. Though, really, if you trace any noble bloodline back far enough, you will find most of them are related in one way or another. For example, Duke Yvonne possesses the Crest of Karen, while her grandfather possessed the Minor Crest of Fraldarius. Yet another of her ancestors bore the Crest of Blathed, which is passed down through the royal bloodline. So, you just gotta have a crest to inherit the family title, huh? Doesn't matter which one it is? In general, yes. The nobility used to be more particular about their requirements, but that is in the past now. Since the houses all keep intermingling, none of them really have a pure bloodline anymore. Meaning they don't get to be picky about which crests they get. Though in truth, the main reason why crests are so valued is because they allow their bearers to wield the hero's relics, passed down through generations. In other words, one who possesses a crest compatible with the family's relic is much more likely to inherit the family title. Huh. Speaking of, you're the heir to House Galatea, but your crest comes from another family, right? Yes, but my house is a little different from the others. We originally split off from House Daphnel in Leicester, you see. And at times in our history, crest bearers have been passed over entirely for the inheritance. Ugh, can't you just pick a rule and stick to it? Why do you nobles always have to make stuff so complicated? Complicated or not, this is important knowledge if you are going to keep serving His Majesty. If you stay ignorant, the soldiers you command will lose respect for you, and His Majesty's reputation will be irreparably damaged. Sorry, you're right. I shouldn't be complaining after I asked you to teach me. <sighs> anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, right. You're the legitimate heir, and you have a crest, which means you're gonna inherit the family title someday. But what about all that talk of becoming a knight? Can you even do that if you're leading your house? No. Oh. I have dreamt of obtaining knighthood and defending the king ever since I was a little girl. But I'm afraid it's not meant to be. And none of your siblings have crests, do they? Isn't there anyone who can take the title for you? My eldest brother says he is willing to do so if necessary. After all, the decision comes down to what the family and the heir want. Usually, leadership passes to a child with a crest. There have been exceptions, as I mentioned before. Even so, it is the duty of every kingdom noble to take up their relic in defense of their people. Not to mention my father is not the only one who wants to see me in charge of the house. The citizens of Galatea are hoping for the same. Huh. I'm not sure I really get all the politics behind it, since I wasn't born in the kingdom. But wouldn't you still be able to protect the king, even if you ended up a count? I am not sure I follow. Sorry, I can explain some other time. There's a story about a mercenary I'd love to tell you. Well, if it isn't our mercenary friend, I trust you've adjusted to life in the kingdom by now. Yeah, more or less. I've been here a few times before on the job, so it's not too big a shock. But I've never lived as far north as Ferdiad. There's still a bunch I need to get used to. Stuff like the wind blowing straight through you, or how it's always so stupidly cold, even inside, or how you can't go out after a blizzard. It snowed so much one night that I couldn't even open the door in the morning. Thought I was off to meet the goddess that day. An amusing enough story when you tell it like that. But Fargus winters are no joke. They're harsh, unforgiving beasts. Tell me, have you grown to despise the cold? Nah, it's not so bad. I mean, sure, all the snow is really annoying. But it's also beautiful. You can't see lamp-lit streets covered in the stuff anywhere but here. 
<laughs> I thought the same when I was young. Though the more years I gain, the more frustrating it becomes. Nevertheless, this brutal tundra is the only home we have. Meaning there's nothing to do but adapt, persevere, and enjoy the lives we've built here. Adapt? Like how the messengers ride pegasi instead of horses during the winter. Exactly. The sight of those majestic creatures soaring through the frost-ridden sky is one unique to Fargus. No matter how much snow blankets the ground, our pegasi quite literally rise to the occasion. When my son and his majesty were still just boys, they followed one off into the frigid mountains of all places. By the time I found them, they were but two shivering masses on the ground. For a moment, I thought my heart would never beat again. So, Felix has been getting into trouble ever since he was a kid, huh? <laughs> his penchant for danger is unchanged, yes. Though I fear his disposition has grown far sharper. The hardships of becoming Duke at his age are undoubtedly weighing upon his mind. I don't know. I don't think you need to worry about him. He can take care of himself just fine. A fair point. Perhaps it's time I let him spread his wings like the Pegasus he chased all those years ago. It seems the coming winter will bring more than just cold to Fargus. The ravages of war approach on the same wind. Training in such conditions will be a struggle indeed, but we cannot afford to ignore the looming Srang threat either. Managing our territories through it all will not be an easy task. But I have faith we will adapt, persevere, and overcome. Just as we always have. Next winter, huh? We'll just have to do whatever it takes to make sure the war's over by then. Ah, oh, Mercedes. Did you go out? Yes, I went to the town of Camulus to help the church. I see. And how did you find it? The townspeople seemed fine enough, but the clergy were very busy. As you know, lots of people fled to Fargus when the war started. And while a number of towns took in refugees, Camulus is particularly busy on that front. In that case, I should send reinforcements and resources from the capital. I will speak with Lady Rhea about this presently. Thank you, Dimitri. I'm sure the clergy will be pleased to hear it. I'm incredibly grateful to you for coming to the church's aid, you know. Most of those people would have ended up homeless if not for your actions. As I recall, you fled from the Empire yourself at a rather young age. Yes, and it was awful. We had nothing to eat and nowhere to shelter from the wind and rain. If not for the priest who helped us, I don't know what would have happened. <sighs> Are you all right, Dimitri? You seem sad. My apologies, Mercedes. But may I speak plainly? You don't need my permission to do that, silly. What's troubling you? I have been wondering for some time if accepting the Central Church was the correct decision. By giving them shelter, I have also given the Empire the perfect excuse for invasion. You took them in because you thought it was the right thing to do. Isn't that so? Yes. The Church of Seros is deeply entwined with the Kingdom's history and politics. The Crown's authority is granted by the Church, which also takes part in governing our villages. Were I to sunder that connection, Nobles and commoners alike would be furious. The kingdom would be split anew, and chaos would reign. Hmm, that is a tough one. It seems like you're going to end up with a fight no matter what you do. Well, at the very least, I know the townspeople are grateful. But I also know it's not as simple as all that. I'm sorry, that probably didn't do much to help ease your concerns. No, I should apologize for making you listen as I prattle on endlessly. Oh, non 
nonsense. If it helped you in any way, I'm glad to do it. Well, I certainly do feel better. Thank you, Mercedes. And please know that I am here for you for whatever reason, no matter how small. What were you thinking? Sticking your nose into some soldier's fight? You have a lot of growing up to do if you're still throwing yourself in the middle of random brawls like that. Keep this up, and House Fraldarius' reputation will be rolling in the mud with you. Not to mention how it reflects poorly on His Majesty, considering he's the one who made you a duke. I know all that. Do you? Because you don't look like a man who's achieved some fantastic new enlightenment. This is rich coming from you. I liked it better when you used to take the heat. <laughs> Are you kidding? You were always the one being scolded when we were kids. Only because you were a half-wood who kept dragging me into your ludicrous schemes. Was that how it was? Now, whatever you say. But tell me, what's got you swinging your fists around this time? Nothing specific. I just couldn't back down after getting involved. You really need to start being more careful. Look, you've even got a bruise going. Who knows what would happen to Fargus if we lost you? I won't say you'd be fine without me, but you do know I could fall in battle any day now, right? <sighs> Bite your tongue, Felix. Just think for two seconds. What would happen to Fargus? And to his majesty, if you died? He's got too much on his plate already. Yet he insists on doing everything himself. War with the Empire, battles outside Fodlin, governing the kingdom, reforming the entire social structure of pretty much everything. If he didn't have you at his side, he'd fall flat on his face. You speak as though you have no stake in this whatsoever. We're in the same situation. One of these days, you'll inherit the title of Margrave Gautier. Are you ready for that? I know, I know, trust me, I am very well aware. Which is why I always act with the utmost integrity. You're the complete opposite of integrity. Though I suppose you have been attempting to shake some of your old habits recently. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't kill you to pat me on the back every once in a while. You're like a baby that just learned to walk. A pat on the back would only knock you over. You can try to make up for your past actions all you want, but that kind of thing isn't easily swept aside. The sooner you realize that, the better. <laughs> uh, that tongue of yours is sharp as ever, I see. Never change, Felix. I guess I was a touch reckless this time, as much as I hate to admit it. So I'll give you that much. Mercedes. Good. I need your help. Felix? Why do you have a cat? Picked it up? Yes, I can see that, but... Oh no! Its little leg is hurt! Here, let me have it. I may be able to heal it with magic. There. It should be fine now. Thanks. Sorry for the trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Though I must admit, you're the last person I expected to bring me an injured kitten. It reminds me of how my little brother once took in a cat when we were young. Hey, that's right. You have a brother from a different father, right? Yes. This was a long time ago, when we both still lived with House Bartels. My brother took in an injured cat, and after it healed, it began living in the mansion. We did our best to feed it secretly so it wouldn't be discovered. Secretly? What's the big deal with one little furball? 
We couldn't let anyone find out, no matter what. The people in that house were... horrid. Had they learned of the cat, they would have put it in a sack and tossed it in the river. Eventually, my mother and I left House Bartels and never looked back. Though we left my brother behind. Still, I've always wondered what happened to that poor little cat. Animals are smart enough. If the thing felt threatened, it would have taken off. I suppose you're right. Uh, anyway, now that you've fixed the cat, I should bring it back to where I found it. Are you sure? It's clearly taken a shine to you. Yeah, but I can't keep it. The thing's practically a kitten. What if it has parents that, I don't know, miss it? Yes, I suppose returning it would be best. All right, go. Shoo! Come on, get out of here already. Stop rubbing my legs. What is it? You want food? Well, I don't have any. Ah, oh, that cat really likes him. Animals clearly understand when a kind soul comes to their aid. Mercedes, do something. This cat won't stop following me. I'm sorry, but there isn't anything I can do. You'll have to wait until it feels like going home. Mm. Goodness, really? Having a cat like you is a good thing. I'm not sure it is. Well, so long as you're stuck waiting, we may as well get comfortable and have a nice chat. My apologies, Felix. Am I getting in the way of your work? No, I just finished up. What do you need? I picked this up on the training grounds. I think it might be yours. Hey, that's my brother's spur. I thought I'd lost it. I ran around asking all the knights who it belonged to. The royal crest made it seem... important. You really should take better care of it. Didn't Glenn receive this as a gift from the late king? Yep. Don't shrug me off like that! I am surprised. You never struck me as the type to keep such a memento with you. I guess I thought it might come in handy someday. <laughs> Whatever you say. Just make sure you don't misplace it again. Ingrid. Wait. Yes? You should have it. Excuse me? Absolutely not. I could never accept something so precious. When my brother was appointed by the king, who do you think he told first? It wasn't me or my father. It was you. So take it. But I... If you want the truth, I always planned to give it to you anyway. I just never found the right time. Well, if you insist, then I accept. Thank you, Felix. But don't get the wrong idea. I'm not doing this so you can go drown yourself in grief. Oh, I am very much aware. I know full well how much you detest such displays of sentimentality. I should get going. I have a meeting to attend. Farewell, Felix. Hey. What kind of greeting is that? I gave you my title, not free license for insolence. Spare me the lecture. I have a question about the lords of Southern Fraldarius territory. So you're having trouble with them as well, are you? Let me guess. They're withholding provisions. Or perhaps they refuse to send troops they promised. How did you know? Because I've been through the same thing with them any number of times. Southern soldiers are unskilled, but they make up for it with sheer numbers. 
I need their cooperation, yet they refuse to negotiate. And I have no idea how to convince them. Yes. I imagine they're dealing with their own issues. And what issues would those be? When they refused to send reinforcements for the invasion of Srang, it was because the lords were embroiled in a succession dispute. If one house sent soldiers, the others would pounce on the opportunity to move against them. But mere letters could never have told you something like that. So you went around to each territory personally? Yes. Though considering we're presently on war footing, doing so now would be unwise. Well, that's hardly helpful, but I'll take it into consideration and see what I can do. <laughs> Something funny? Just thinking that you've grown into a fine duke. Were you expecting me to fail? You're the one who gave me the title, after all. True. But I inherited the role when I was much older than you. You're doing extremely well for your age. It seems I raised two very capable sons. Don't tell me you're glorifying Glenn's death again. <sighs> Felix. I've been walking in your footsteps, serving our king and leading an army of knights. After all that, I thought maybe I'd come to understand you a bit better. But I still can't stomach what you said that day. Looks like I overstepped yet again. Perhaps the two of us will never see eye to eye. If Glenn were alive, I half suspect he'd say I was being childish. I have exhausted most of the Pegasus Corps, so how should I advance the mounted units on the ground? A tricky proposition indeed. The enemy general won't be foolish enough to miss a chance to seize the advantage here. If we are going to face the enemy with our remaining troops, it would be best to have the mounted units take up formation in the narrow pass to the east. Then, the remaining Pegasus Knights can attack from the cliffs above and end this quickly. Still, my scouts claim there may be archers stationed on those cliff tops. Naturally. Everyone knows to expect Pegasus Knights as soon as they see the standard of Galatea. The enemy will doubtless be ready for this. Yes, it is quite the predicament. I cannot help but wonder what my father or brothers would do. As someone who commands an army of Galatea, withdrawal is not an option. I don't think you need to rack your brain over this too hard, Ingrid. But if we fight without any sort of strategy, we will suffer major casualties. Which might prove to be in your favor. If the enemy sees your back to the wall, they may let their guard down and grow reckless. How many Pegasus Knights stand ready? Nearly half. Perhaps more if their wounds can heal in time. Then select the most skilled from among them and make for the clifftops. And fly into the jaws of their trap? While using the speed of the Pegasi to minimize injury, make it look like you're taking a desperate retreat, then withdraw your troops. If the enemy thinks they've subdued the famed Pegasus Knights of Galatea, they'll deploy troops from their main fortress, leaving it lightly guarded. Once they do, Send a separate unit of your remaining Pegasus Knights to capture it. Hmm. Yes, that just might work. You are amazing, Lord Rodrigue. I suppose this comes from your wide range of experience. Actually, it's a strategy suggested by your brother once upon a time. My brother? Oh, that's right. I believe he served in Srang while he was still a squire. Despite his low rank, he astonished us all with his clever suggestions for deploying our flying units. I have a long way to go if I wish to live up to him. I must prove more diligent about studying strategy. Very ambitious. My son could stand to learn a thing or two from your example. 
But you ought not overextend yourself. Make certain to rest those wings every once in a while. I wouldn't be able to face the Count or your brothers if I allowed you to work yourself to exhaustion. Resting my wings is a rather difficult proposition. I can't very well run about playing games as I did when I was a child. In any case, I thank you very much for the advice. I think I know how to proceed now. The pleasure is mine, Ingrid. This is a most dangerous strategy, so let's endeavor to make sure we both come out of this alive. <laughs>